Okay, we should be recording now. All right, well, thanks everyone for joining us um, to the September uh, NOP Commerce Global Meetup. And today is really going to be all about themes uh, with the, the main talk with uh, with Christo from uh, NOP Templates. And there we go. So, yeah, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. And I understand that this is just difficult for our various people to attend. We do record these meetups and we then post them on the NOP Commerce YouTube channel. Uh, we've been pretty good at posting these within the couple days of the meetup itself. So uh, once it does get posted, I'll put a link in the meetup itself uh, if you don't see it on the YouTube channel. Um, but either way, you, you should be able to find it within a few days after this meetup. So the agenda is, uh, like I said, it's all about themes this for this month. Uh, I'm going to do a lightning talk on kind of getting started with themes. So if you're new to themes, you'll get a a quick uh, on start of, of what that is like. And then our main talk is going to be again with, with Christo from uh, Nop Templates, and he's going to get into some various aspects of theme development. And and when it comes to the amount of themes that Nop Templates has to offer, by far they are, I would say, they're the experts on uh, how to go about theme development for, for very large scale themes. Uh, this is a, a meetup for not only uh, developers, but for store owners also. So we try to have a, a mix of talks of uh, technical and non-technical talks. We haven't had any non-technical talks yet, but uh, I am working on that as well. Uh, overall, we uh, meet the third Tuesday of every month and uh, definitely pay attention to meetup.com for what's coming. As soon as I have someone committed and for that given month, that's when I'll typically send out the announcement for the month. And again, the meetups are posted on the YouTube channel. Uh, you'll kind of just see them in the recent uploads as they get put out there. And the last thing I want to share in the announcements is uh, if you're interested in giving a talk, you know, a 60 minute presentation is kind of the norm for our main talk or even a lightning talk like I'm going to do here shortly. Um, please reach out to me. And this is for technical and non-technical talks. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring, you can do that as well. Typically, uh, I'll give props to the main talk if they're coming from a certain company to where you really don't have to sponsor per se. And I'll put your uh, company logo on the meetup post. Um, but overall, you know, when it comes to sponsoring, if you just want to straight up sponsor, usually like a gift card or is something um, shared or even a license to your product if you have something like that. And, uh, you know, you'll if you're not speaking that that uh, for that given meetup, you'll get the first five minutes of the meetup to kind of say things about your company and so on. And again, the logo and company information will be added to the meetup post. So overall, email me at john at nopacademy.com if you want to uh, speak or sponsor a future meetup. All right, I'm going to jump into my lightning talk as I transition here. Okay, so I believe everyone can see my screen. I should have asked that earlier, but I'm assuming so. You can say something in the chat if you want. And throughout actually the meetup, I'll monitor the chat primarily for the main talk, and we'll have more of a Q&A after, uh, after both talks. So uh, just see if you're live in the chat. All right, I see. Thanks, RJ. All right, so getting started with themes. We're going to uh, really quickly talk about uh, how to create and install a theme just how to understand a theme for what comes out of the template. And then we're also going to modify a theme in a very small way and see what that effort looks like. And here we go. All right, so let's create a theme. And when it comes to creating a theme, um, you really just use the default clean template um, for, for creating the theme. That's kind of like your file new project there. So. In doing that, you would really just uh, from within Solution Explorer as well, you could do this or at the file system. You could simply uh, um, select that folder, copy paste, and uh, then rename it. I'm kind of following the documentation on this one to where it's just my first theme. But I highly recommend this is one of the first things you do because you are probably going to want to modify something and you do not want to mo modify default clean. That's your basis. Uh, so first thing you want to do and working with NOP Commerce, if you're 
looking at making any changes whatsoever, you want to create your theme. It might be your company name, theme, or something like that, but create the theme <laughs> and copy that folder. You also want to, um, before you even run the application, if you copy this theme, is that you want to change the system name and you know, along with the other information inside the theme.json file. Um, so the system name especially, but the friendly name and other aspects, uh, you definitely want to change this information because if you try to run the solution uh, after copying this folder and prior to installing, uh, you will get an error. <laughs> so I, you know, make sure that you give that system name a new name so it doesn't conflict with default clean. All right, then from there, you want to go to admin, configuration, settings, general settings, and then go ahead and select your new theme. And it's good to point out that that thumbnail is simply coming from that preview JPEG. So, so far we covered in the template uh, that theme.json that you want to edit right as you right after you made the copy. And then you got the preview.jpg that you might want to update as well, maybe with your company logo or something like that. All right, let's kind of go through some of these to understand the theme a little bit better. So of the sets of files that we have here, we have the, this, uh, uh, certain style files, certain uh, CSS files. We have our images that are by default, and then we have our views. So of the styles, when you look at, kind of just going top down here, um, we'll just, so looking at, John, we can hear you. You are muted. Oh, someone muted me, it looks like. All right. How, how long? How should I back up a little bit? Yes. I can do yes. All right. Someone yeah, someone accidentally muted me. So I'm going to back up. Hold on. How far oh. should I go back? I'm going to, you tell me when. CSS. I didn't hear anything from that point. From here? From the print? From print CSS, yeah. Perfect. All right, I'll continue. Well, actually, that. before that, you, you'll mute as far back as when you were talking about uh, images folder or something like that. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you for speaking up. But yes, you can accidentally mute me throughout this. All right. How about right about here, right at the beginning of the section? Yeah. All yeah. right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate that. Thanks for speaking up. All right, so understanding a theme. Let's try this again. So in understanding a theme, uh, we have the different sections of styles, images, and views. And we're going to look at these a little bit closer here. So the print CSS, that's really regarding uh, styles around the order details page when you're trying to print that out, uh, kind of like a print preview. Uh, so that's kind of good to be aware of, but there's not a lot of things that you would probably change in this one, unless there's some specific, specific things that you really want to change for your organization. And then within styles.css, that's where you're going to find uh, pretty much everything, <laughs> at least uh, when it comes to the default theme. So you're going to have like at the top more your global styles, but almost, you know, so many of the elements that make up you know HTML are kind of addressed within this particular style sheet. You got global forms as well. Inside here, you also see default for uh, table type elements. So this is kind of like the big one <laughs> that you're going to be working with the most. Uh, alongside of that file, you have the uh, styles that are RTL, the right to left theme, which is actually it's almost a copy of that one with with a lot of things kind of changed throughout in order to get this kind of a yeah you know, well the right to left type theme. And the way you would actually implement that particular CSS file is that you would have to go to admin configuration languages and select the language such as such as English in order to implement this particular style sheet. 
All right, so looking at images, this might be a little obvious, but you have the different uh, default images that you would uh, that you could kind of put in your own images. One to point out is that you do have the logo in here. And if you want to replace that logo, I noticed that the recent version of Commerce, the logo size is, uh, you know, the width of 250 pixels by 50. I believe the documentation has something just a little bit different. Also, it's a GIF. So it's good to be aware um, and just kind of, you know, check the I, I would go with this for what's in version 4.3 uh, if you want to replace the logo so you can replace it here and there's also a couple other ways you could replace it as well through the administrator so ahead uh, cshtml that's where you're really kind of referencing uh, those style sheets as well as maybe other ones that you might have as part of your theme um, you might want to break up the styles.css as well so it's good to kind of point out that, you know, this is almost the, at the, like a master page, what <laughs> things used to be back in the day. Um, but yeah, this is where you kind of want to put your, uh, at a global level, the uh, different style sheets you're using. Oh yes, and if you don't have this particular, uh, uh, particular head file in your theme, you will throw an error. Matter of fact, if you deleted that one out of the default clean, it would also throw an error because by default, you have to have this particular uh, CSHTML file for your theme to work. And uh, last of these files, um, view imports. Uh, so when it comes to your different razor pages and having some default using statements put in, um, you basically wanna, you could modify this file in order to include some of your own namespaces for, for your models and your views. There's definitely more to go through here on themes. I didn't want to get too much in the weeds, but the documentation has a couple pages that are worth checking out when it comes to uh, understanding more of the column layout and design layout uh, when it comes to uh, the default theme itself for how things are put in place. So that's worth checking out within the NOP Commerce documentation. Also, possibly an overlooked one, there's this customizing uh, uh, not commerce themes to where when it comes to changing the layout, you know, some some simple examples uh, within this article, there's some more information about that as well. Matter of fact, I think this is the article where they talk about the image of the logo, logo .gif. Uh So yeah, I would, yeah, look at the actual logo.png and probably work with those settings. All right, when it comes to modifying a theme, let's go through an example here. So let's say we want to add the Instagram social media link uh, to this theme, to you know where we're gonna we need to customize it, and we need to basically put the Instagram uh, link here along with the other social media links. So where you'd start is first find it <laughs> within uh, not that web or not shared components social buttons and default. That's where this particular template resides. And then you would copy that particular file over into the same structure into your theme itself. So here we're copying it over into uh, into the themes folder, my first theme, and so on uh, to put that in place. Then when we take a closer look at that file, uh, we'll see, of course, all like we'd expect the other social media links. And what we're wanting to do is add a line of code, nothing too complex here. And I'm going to follow a standard like I see with the class names of YouTube and Twitter and Facebook to where I'm going to use the class name of Instagram. I'm going to try to follow that pattern of how that class is defined. I'm hard coding the link to the Instagram account here, but that's something that you might want to have in, in a setting. Um, so yes, we're going to add the Instagram class next to the styles.css. So within styles.css, the before, you notice um, there's this Google Plus. Now I know Google Plus was, well, for one, it's no longer around in general, but it is deprecated in, as well within Knopf Commerce. So when I did a search through this styles.css for YouTube, I found Google Plus. So I thought, you know, I think I'll just go ahead and reuse this style for Google Plus to be uh, Instagram. So I just made that minor change of changing Google Plus to Instagram. And I also noticed that, you know, this is really part of, uh, oh yeah, 
definitely almost forgot about this point. Um, you want to not only edit the styles at CSS, but you are going to want to modify your styles at RTL CSS in order to keep things consistent for if you do switch to the right to left theme for a given uh, language. Um, but next, you would then have to edit this image. So we would next go on to uh, seeing what's involved with this sprite image. And looking at this image, uh, we see that we have the uh, old Google Plus logo there. I'm just simply going to reuse this one. Uh, in a way, it kind of made my job a little easier. I can reuse this particular one and put the Instagram logo on top of it. So it's kind of a hack way to do it. But nonetheless, this is just an example of how you can modify a theme. Um, so yes, I just went ahead and modified that. And so from that point forward, so after moving over the default um, CSHTML file, editing that, then editing the style sheet, as well as the right to left style sheet, and then editing or editing the image itself for that sprite image that makes up all these images. Uh, then when you hit a refresh, then you got the link. So in some ways it was a little more work just because I wasn't expecting to modify the sprite, but nonetheless, you know, it was pretty self-contained on how to modify this particular aspect within the theme. All right. So to kind of wrap some of this up, we have uh, in the marketplace, most of us are aware that you can pretty much search through the marketplace. You can even uh, see what's free out there and you know check out what's out there if you were to search on that. It's really good to point out like what a vendor like Knopf Templates has to offer. And there's a lot to be learned from a vendor such as Knopf Templates. Uh, just by looking at the structure of their themes. So let's say if we're going to go to this not venture um, theme, notice they they accommodate a couple different uh, uh, variations of that. And also as you're browsing a theme, they're also allowing you to kind of see different color factors that you can put in place at the top. Uh, you can also see the different um, you know ways that it could be uh, sized on various devices. I know some of that's built into the browser now where you can change that, but it's really nice and handy to have this right here to kind of see what uh, the theme would look like. So you know props to Knopf templates for that. The other aspect, after I was looking into the themes themselves at a code level, and I'm just going to highlight this more at a documentation level for Knopf templates, because this is something I would think that you'd want to do for your own themes as well. So whether you go with somebody like Knopf templates for your base theme and work with it from there, there's some just coding patterns in here. I'm sure they'll be addressed as well in the, in the talk coming up. But just by looking at the documentation, a theme basically has some other dependencies of a plugin. So they have their core plugin that a lot of the other plugins utilize, and then there's a handful of other plugins that are used as well for a given theme. So you do get some plugins along with your theme usually when you make a purchase. Um, and then there's usually a plugin also for the theme itself that's utilized. And this is kind of a certain install order of plugins. So as an example of the different plugins, you got like a shopping cart and a instant search, things like that that come with this particular theme. If we were to also take a little closer look at this, after you install Knopf templates, you also get some customized administration, which is something you're going to probably want to consider as well as you start making customizations to where you can have these kind of feature toggles in place. So for this example of the Instagram URL, they added that, uh, that social media link and they're handling it accordingly by being a config option. So if we take a closer look on how this is implemented in their theme, We can see that, um, you know, basically we have a we have a condition here that makes sure that we can kind of pull the that there's a value inside of that particular setting, and then you know, then it would display that particular uh, that Instagram link within the same pattern as we would expect uh, within the the shared component social buttons default that CSHTML. So. The pattern's set for everybody, even not templates to pretty much follow um, when it comes at, at this level of having configuration uh, in a common way and uh, and for just how it's implemented overall. There's a there's a pattern for your small themes to your large themes. All right, so that's all I have. Um, uh, 
Not Commerce, of course, check out the site. Uh, more importantly, the Not Meetup, third Tuesday of the month, notmeetup.com is a kind of a shortcut to getting to the um, um, to the Meetup page. NopTube is a shortcut getting to the Not Commerce YouTube channel. Um, so yes, email me if you want to copy this presentation. I'll share a link with you where you can download it, as well as uh, when it comes to, if you want to present or sponsor a Meetup, questions, feedback, feel free to reach out to me. And now I'm going to turn it. John, I have one question regarding the, this, uh, the weekend theme. So if you, you have given an example where you, you can add the Instagram link uh, through the settings as well. But if you want that, uh, to change something in the C sharp file as well, so how will you be uh, taking care in that uh, the theme thing? Let's say I want to uh, have that settings through the C sharp uh, Instagram settings through the admin panel. But how, where will be, I will be adding that C sharp file? Uh, I don't know if I really heard all of that. <laughs> it was hard. To, it sounded like you're breaking up a lot. If you could put your question in the chat, and we'll address it at the end after Christos talk, as well as other questions as well. I'd appreciate that because I kind of lost your last part of that. So, uh, Christo, I'm going to let you go ahead and uh, share your screen. I'm going to stop sharing mine. Okay. And I'm also going to turn off my camera and mute myself, but I'll monitor the chat for us later to, to look at those questions. So, I must be sharing my screen right now. You see anything? Yeah, we see your screen. Okay. So, hi guys. My name is Christo and I work as a front-end developer and web designer for Nop Templates for the last eight years. I'm very happy to have the chance to speak to you about Nop Commerce team development today. And before we start, I just want to clarify a bit about what this presentation will be about. I watched last month's presentation, which was about Knob Commerce plugin development, and it was very technical. The presenter basically created a new sample plugin from scratch, and he was guiding us through the code all the time from the beginning to the end. But we can't really take the same approach here as we can't create a new team for just one hour and inspect its code and discuss its code. So the idea of today's presentation is a bit different. And my objective here is more like to share some strategies and highlights from our actual work here at Knob Templates, which eventually will help you to develop better Knob Commerce team for less time. Uh, you all know that Knob Commerce is providing us with a fully functional backend and content management system out of the box. So the team development work here on our side is actually front end coding for the most part. So I will try to elaborate on the Knob Commerce front-end structure and provide you with some details that eventually will give you a better understanding about the relations between the various elements, sections, and pages in a Knob Commerce web store, which could really save you some time and make your job easier when developing a Knob Commerce team. And of course, I will talk quite a bit about design and user experience to us. This is a fundamental part of the entire process of development of any website. Uh, I said that most of the team development work here is front-end coding, but actually it is design and front-end coding. Uh, anyway, we'll get on that in a few minutes. So the presentation will be more theoretical than technical, but of course, if you have any technical questions, feel free to ask and we'll try to answer everyone at the end. So when starting such a project, a specific web store, I mean, because every knob commerce team is exactly that, the first thing you have to know is 
the thematic target of your website, is it going to be something very specific like an art shop, for example, or it will be something more universal like, a, like an online supermarket, which is going to sell all kinds of stuff. You have to be aware of any specifics before you start because it may lead you to different decisions about the look and the layout of the website and about the functionality implementation. For example, product filtration requirements may be different between uh, various web stores depending on the store specifics. Some really small stores may not require filtration at all. And perhaps the thematic target of your uh, web store is mostly a marketing decision on your side. But in the most common case, you will want your team to be as universal as possible. So all kinds of store owners to find it useful for their online businesses. Uh, so let me just show you two websites that are using one of our NobCommerce teams. Both of them are using exactly the same team. So this is the first one. It's a quite small website. And this is the second one. All right. Uh, this one, you can see it's more like a personal website, maybe the site of a painting artist. And this one is a typical medium sized web shop. The important thing here is that both sites are using the same team out of the box. I don't see any custom modifications. So they just bought the team and used whatever is already there and achieved such a different result. And that's what I meant. The team is flexible enough to be used for completely different purposes. So flexibility and the available level of customization is something you really have to consider when developing your own teams. And if you take a look at the bigger picture, the process of implementing an e-commerce website has two fundamental parts, design and functionality. Both are very important, uh, but it seems most developers don't pay much attention to design, but design is extremely important for the success of any website as it directly affects usability and smooth user experience. I remember eight years ago when I started to work here at Knob Templates and we just released our first teams for Knob Commerce. One of my employers said that it's the design that eventually sells the products. He said that we may put a hundred plugins into a team, but it's the look that finally sells it. And that is especially true if you are selling the team directly to the web store owner. I mean, if you are selling your teams to other developers who will modify them later for their own customers, then they may be interested only in functionalities. But a store, a store owner will only buy a team that looks attractive. There's no way around that. But of course, the functionalities are no less important as we're talking about e-commerce projects after all, but design comes first. All of our teams are designed in-house and before the actual design work starts, there is a serious amount of research about what's already on the market. For example, if we are planning to do a fashion store, we check a lot of existing fashion websites and how their most important features look and work. Uh, like the product catalog, the product filtration, uh, the shopping cart checkout and so on. Then we discuss if we can adapt various changes into the default knob commerce layout. And after that, the actual design work starts.
So when you start designing, you have to be aware what exactly you will be designing, which means you have to be familiar with the default Nobcommerce public store structure. And Nobcommerce is actually a very big web store. It has about 80 different dedicated web pages. And of course, you can design every single one of them. Instead, you have to take care of the design of several most important things. And from there, you can just use elements from the existing design to complete your job on all pages. But to do that, you have to be aware about all existing pages and elements that come by default with Nobcommerce. So you can make informed decisions about what to design and what not. So we created some kind of a wireframe of the default Nobcommerce web store, which the designers here use every time uh, when starting a new team project, just to be aware what exactly to design. Uh, let me show you some of it now. Okay. This is the Nobcommerce category page when the products are shown in a grid. And this one is the Nobcommerce product details page. Every possible element is present on the page. And this way the designer knows what exactly to be designed when starting a new project. Everything that's already present in Nobcommerce is shown here, plus the plugins available on our site. So it's quite a big wireframe with lots of content. Here you can see the wireframe file structure. All these directories uh, contain groups of wireframe pages. And if we check inside, we can see that there is a lot of content here. This is the account pages group, but actually the entire Nobcommerce public web store is covered by this guide. And beyond that, it is up to you how far you will go from the original layout of Nobcommerce, which by the way, is also depending on what kind of plugins and additional functionalities you are planning to implement in your project. The more variety of functionalities, the more variety in design. But we always try to modify the original front end as little as possible because if you modify too many things in too many files, then there will be a lot of work waiting for you on every next version upgrade when Nobcommerce is changed. And this is actually a very important thing to consider when designing things. You have to know in advance if your design is going to require a lot of source code modifications or not. There will be some changes required for sure, but the good practice here is to keep the number of the modified files at the front end at minimum. Okay. So as I said before, there are two possible types of customers who will buy your Nobcommerce teams. Web developers who modify the team for their own customers and store owners who are not developers and don't do, don't do any coding. So they fully rely only on the functionalities that come with the team out of the box. The more functionality, the better user experience, but also more time for development. And most additional functionalities that go beyond the default knob commerce are achieved by using plugins. And to provide our customers who buy our teams with a lot of extra options for their websites, we pack 
every single team with at least 10 additional knob commerce plugins. Of course, the plugins we develop will integrate in every knob commerce website, but for our own teams, we provide additional visual styling. So every plugin looks like an integral part of the team. Now, I want to show you what kind of functionalities and plugins I'm talking about. So you can get a better idea of the level of customization we are aiming for. This is the demo landing page of the same team used by the two websites that you saw before. And it has four different variants. It has two main variants actually, uh, these two on the left and these two on the right. And each of them has two more variants on its own. And because of that, this team requires four different demos, but it's still a single team. Now, let's take a look at the demos and how different they are. Okay. This is the first demo. I'm not going to scroll through the entire page. Just take a look here at the top of the home page. This is the second demo of the same team. And as you can see, there are some differences. This is the third one. Okay. And the last one. All differences between these demos are achieved by various admin settings and by enabling and disabling various plugins. And there is a big variety of different plugins enabled on the different demos. For example, this plugin here, which we call Smart Collections, you can see on the other demos too, but it looks differently. Take a look, the layout is different. And here is even more different. And here is even more different. So this is a single plugin, but you can see how different it looks uh, on the four different demos. You can also see that the main layout of, a, of the website is a bit different. For example, if you take a look at the header, you may notice some differences. Look, the main navigation here is available right away and here is put in a sidebar menu that you can open and close. Uh, the search bar here looks like this. It's toggleable. Uh, same here, but here, for example, the search bar is completely different. And as I said, this is achieved by various settings available in the team administration. So let's take a look there. We just need to log in. Okay, let's go here. And now we have to visit the team settings page. The team is called element. So we go to the element team settings page. And here you can see we have two tabs with general settings and 
additional settings. And if you take a look here, you will notice that there are dedicated settings that control the team variants. This switch is here, layout design and layout variant. The first one is changing the main team variants and the second one is changing the additional variants. All these settings are implemented through a separate plugin, which is specific for this team only, and which we call a team plugin. It injects its own content into the administration, and it is actually the only work we do at the back end when developing a team. Everything else is happening at the front end. Uh, the plugin does nothing fancy at the back end. It just stores a pack of settings into the database, but it does a lot of things at the front end. So take a look up here, please. You will see some color presets available. The thing that all store owners would like to change the most is the color scheme of their website. They all have their own branding with specific colors and they will definitely want their website to reflect their core branding. And with this functionality here, it is actually very easy to do that. You just click uh, on the color you prefer or you create your own because you have a color picker here. And then you save your settings and you are all set. The new color is applied to the website. Let me show you on the demos. Here we have this panel, which is essentially a remote control for the team plugin functionalities. You can change the team variants from here and you can change colors. And as you can see, when I click on the color presets, the primary color of the website is changing, which is a very useful thing for the web store owners. But there is one more thing I want to show you in the team administration. So let's go back. Okay, element team settings. Please take a look at this panel here. This panel named custom headstyles is something that allows you to inject CSS code directly into the site. This way you can do any visual changes on the website without editing any CSS files which is extremely useful for the store owners who are not familiar with coding. So they can just test with various code snippets they find online without messing up any of the default CSS files. But this is also very useful for developers too, uh, who can test things quickly on the fly here by just adding and removing code. However, the most important benefit of this is probably the ability to store your custom changes here in the administration separately from the original files. And this way, when the next NotCommerce version comes and you want to upgrade your web store, you can merge your previous changes very easily into the new version because the team plugin stores the code into the database and you don't depend on any version files in any way. The code you put here is applied to the site through an additional CSS file, which is generated dynamically when you save your team settings in the administration, which is when you click this button here. And that file is loaded after all other CSS on the site. So it has a higher priority than the rest of the CSS code. Anything you can do 
in a standard CSS file, you can do here too. There are no any limitations. Okay, but what we do when starting a new team? The most obvious option will be to make a copy of the default knob commerce team, of course, and start modifying it right away. Uh, John already showed that in the beginning of the presentation. He just made a copy of the default clean team and did some modifications. So we're not going to do the same thing now. Uh, but think about if you are planning to have a lot of custom modifications and go far away from the default layout, that will be a lot of work, really. As I said, KnobCommerce is a very big web store with a whole lot of dedicated pages. And starting every new team from scratch will always be a lot of work. Instead of that, it is much better to have your own template team so you can start from there and not from the default the default knob commerce team especially if you are planning to create more than a few teams in the beginning it will take some extra time to create such template but after that it will be of a great help and will save you a lot of time so let's start a new team using our own templates. We go to the Teams folder in the KnobCommerce installation directory. Find the team template and make a copy. Okay, this is the copy. We have to put some new name, like new team, for example. Uh, then, as John already shown, we have to modify the team JSON file and change all instances of the team name. Uh, sorry, if you don't see well this code, I will just zoom a bit. Maybe now it's okay. All right, so we change the name everywhere in this file. And here. And here. We save the file. And if we go to our administration. And if we open the general settings page where all teams are listed, you can see that the new team is available here and ready for using. We just have to make it active and save the settings. And if we go to the public store, okay, here is our new team. As you can see, this is no longer an identical copy of the default clean team. Uh, also, this is very far from a completed, completed website. Uh, you can notice various inconsistencies, uh, wrong spacing, missing margins, and so on. But this is much closer to our final product that we need than the default knob commerce team is, because we always do some specific modifications uh, over the default knob commerce layout. Of course, this template is based on default clean team too, but it's partially modified and we already implemented some of the things we want to change. And from here, we will spend less time to get to the final product we need compared to if we start from scratch. Now, let's take a look 
on the CSS code. We go to teams, find the team template, and find the main team CSS file, uh, which is this one. Okay. Uh, the code looks very big on my side, but maybe this way is better for you. All right. Uh, for some teams, we use some CSS preprocessors, and the end result there is a compiled CSS code that looks differently. But I want to share with you the very basic case where raw CSS code is used. As you can see, all the code is separated into sections. Uh, the global code here, uh, the global forms code, the global tables code here, and we have the header code section, the footer code section, and of course, uh, page specific uh, code sections. Now, I want to show you the visual representation of this CSS template. Please take a look here. Let me scroll to the end of the image. Okay, this graphic is representing almost all dedicated pages in NobCommerce, their connections, and the way the CSS code is distributed to them. I created this graphic a few years back, so it's not entirely up to date, sorry about that. A few newer pages are missing, but almost everything is here. So this is still providing a very good representation of the NobCommerce Public Store page structure. At the top, we have the global CSS code sections marked in different colors. Uh, below that, we have the global HTML code sections. And below that, we have the local CSS sections and all HTML pages or every dedicated HTML document. All CSS blocks in this graphic directly represent the code section in the main template file. I already showed you the global styles, the global form styles, the global table styles, header styles, and so on and so on. As I already pointed out, some blocks are marked uh, with a different color. It is done like that in order to mark all common elements on different pages and the way to target them with a common global code. And this is something that's extremely useful and very efficient. For example, take a look at the global forms. Uh, their section here is marked in blue. And if we start checking the NobCommerce pages, here we can see which pages exactly contain form elements that are completely identical to the form elements on other pages. So this way we see the connection between the pages. We know what is the common HTML code that is shared between the pages. And the same thing uh, is true for the other global CSS section, like uh, the global tables code. If it's marked in green, and if we start checking the pages, we see which pages in NobCommerce are sharing the same table elements that are present on other pages. Of course, 
once you're familiar enough with this structure, you will never again write your CSS code strictly per page. It is just not necessary to style, for example, form elements uh, on, the login uh, on the login page alone, then on the registration page, then on account pages. You can do that all at once if you know which the common elements are. And this graphic is showing exactly that. It shows the relations between the pages and the common elements between them. Of course, if you know not commerce inside out, you are probably familiar with all that already. But if you are new to new commerce, this can be of a great help. For example, when we hire new people in our team, they always examine knob commerce through this graphic and they always say it helped them a lot. Okay. Uh, so the next big thing we did on our way to multiple teams development is to create a core script, which is essentially a script framework with a wide array of predefined functionalities and is used by all of our knob commerce teams. Let's take a look. Uh, let's close this one and we go to plugins. We check the core plugin and we select this file. It is based on jQuery as jQuery comes with knob commerce by default. And as you can see, everything here is put into separate modules, which can be initialized per team. So you can turn things on and off for every team alone. Uh, you can see the different modules names here like uh, header model, menu model, overlay, and so on. OK, I said that you can t uh, turn things on and off for each team. How do we do that? The control is put into each team, of course. Every team has its own main script file where you can set up some commands and refer to the core script framework. So let's take a look at one such file. We just select the team, go to scripts and open the main team script file. Okay. Here we interact with the core script modules, uh, header, flyout card, the touch the touch toggle, uh, all kind of models that are available in the core script framework. Uh, for example, the toggle functionality, let me just show you that one on the demo. Uh, it is this team. We go to the block, we select a blog post. And down here, we have the blog comments, which uh, are hidden by default, and which we can open by clicking on this button. So what this button does is just to toggle the comment form and the comments, if uh, there are any. Uh, this is actually the same toggle action that is available in the default jQuery. So it's nothing special. Uh, but as you can see here, we can activate this by only using the selector name of the target element and the selector name of the trigger element, uh, the element that will toggle the other one. You just need to set the selectors here and you're all set. So 
if you have 15 elements on your website that you need to toggle, then this core functionality already starts saving you some time. You don't have to create new toggling every time. You just add the element selectors here and you're all set. Now, let's take a look at the at touch the touch functionality. It does exactly what it says, what the name says, which is to move HTML elements anywhere on the page, which is something we often need depending on the screen size. For example, on big screens, we need one element to be present at a specific place in the HTML. And on small screens, on uh, mobile device screens, we need it at completely different place in the HTML structure. Uh, for example, let's check uh, the search box in the same team. Okay, this is the search box. If we inspect the code, search box. All right, we, we can see that the search box is placed inside the search button. The markup, the HTML markup of the search box is placed inside this button. But let's see what's happening on a small screen. Here is the search, and if we inspect, okay, this is the search box. And, and now we see that the search box is placed directly into the header. So this is not the same place in the HTML structure. But if we expand the screen again, and we expand the search box. Now we see it is moved back to where it was. And again, all you have to do is to specify the selectors of the element to be moved and the new parent element where it will be moved. So this core script is designed to have the ability to apply different code per different resolutions. Uh, let me show you where we define a breakpoint. It's here. Here we defined a breakpoint. It's uh, currently at 1200 pixels, which means all resolutions bigger than 1200 pixels are considered by this website to be desktop monitors. And all resolutions smaller than 1200 pixels are considered by the website to be mobile device screens. And the script is also designed to trigger an event every time you, uh, your responsive breakpoint is passed, which is, of course, when you resize your browser screen. So we are able to execute custom JavaScript depending on the screen resolutions dynamically and not only when the page is loaded. So in general, this code here is very helpful and also a big time saver. So some of you may wonder why it is necessary to create your own framework instead of using an existing one. It's because it's a safer and more flexible approach for us. It is specific to our own needs and we have full control over it. And that's something we won't have if you're using an external framework. It may look like this approach will take more time at first, but in the end, it will save you a lot of time and trouble. And this is also true for external CSS frameworks, like uh, Bootstrap, for example. It just the reality of things is that 
any additional external tools may in the end require more time to maintain than if you create all things yourself, especially if such tools are used in a lot of different products on your site. Uh, the choice is yours, of course, but we really prefer to stick to knob commerce only and create almost everything else by ourselves. And for now, this is pretty much all, guys. You see that all you need to develop your own knob commerce teams is to have some front end skills and to be well familiar with the default knob commerce front end structure. For more advanced tasks, you will need more skills, of course, but for a start, that's completely enough. And by the way, we are releasing a new knob commerce team right now. So it may be interesting to show it to you too. Just a second. Uh, here is the landing page of the demos and we can check each one of these. Okay, first demo. Looks quite advanced. Lots of plugins and stuff. Ah, second demo. Still a bit similar to the first one. All right. The third one. Now here we are starting to notice more differences. Okay, and the last one, which is my favorite, by the way. Uh, this team is created in exactly the same way described in the presentation, starting from a template team, then adding several team specific settings in the administration that allow us to quickly change the team look. Okay, thank you very much for your time, guys. And if you have some quick questions, feel free to ask in the chat. And if you have some more complex questions, you can always drop us an email and we'll try to provide you with some hints. Thank you. Thanks, Kuso. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I've been consolidating the chat and in, into a notepad. Hold on. All right, can you see my screen? Christo? Yeah, I okay, see good. your screen. Okay. So I've just been kind of pulling in the different, just questions and comments that have been coming up. And let's see. This is probably more of a comment. Um, so when it comes out, like my example of adding the Instagram settings in the admin would involve some changes in C-sharp file as well. Um, and it's basically the comment was made that you could inject the settings in the CSHTML file. But I think overall, what I was really kind of trying to point out there is as you make changes and you're going to want to have probably some administration around those changes as well so you can feature toggle them. Um, I think that's where I wasn't really kind of getting into that aspect to where I showed that, uh, you know, not templates does take care in those situations of uh, having those customizations. Um, I don't know if I'm reading any more into that question or not, but we can go ahead and move on to this next one. Can you share the wireframe guide that you showed earlier? like the actual template or is that something that you just have we, internal? Yeah, we need to discuss this with the team. Okay. I can't really answer to that right now. 
Yeah, even if it were for purchase, I bet people. <laughs> yeah, maybe just like uh, just drop us an email, and uh, if you really need this wireframe, and we'll answer it to uh, to you. And you're also it wasn't really mentioned in here, but the you know what you put together that overall diagram. Uh, yeah, I know you said it hasn't been updated, but that overall diagram of the current layout of the styles look pretty valuable as well. So, yeah, actually, I can share that with you. But uh, this diagram reflects my own CSS template, and even if I share it with you, I'm not sure it will be as informative if you don't use my own CSS template. So, <laughs> if yeah, that's you understandable. Have, that no yeah. warranties. I understand that. <laughs> okay. I think anybody else would kind of understand that as well. Uh, so I actually want to address this question. Is this a session on an advertisement for NAP templates or how to create new templates? And I want to go ahead and I won't, I'm not going to put this on you, Crystal, to answer. Um, but, uh, you know, in the beginning, we of course, we had the lightning talk on really kind of getting started with templates. Um, but I don't really see this and what you covered as an advertisement as much as an example on how you want to structure your own templates as well. So whether you use NOP templates or do your own thing, I think there's a lot of patterns and practices that can be discovered. Yeah, uh, for sure. But uh, one hour is just not enough to get into the code. Uh, it's simply not possible. So uh, yeah. uh, as I stated uh, in the beginning, uh, my objective was to share some strategies and highlights uh, yes. instead of getting into the code. But if you have any questions about the code, just drop us an email and we will provide you with some hints. Next one. Um, let's see, but is that, I'm not sure what that exactly is. I'll probably use my interpretation, but is that a good practice for working with a team? So where this came up in the conversation, I'm not exactly sure, but I guess the one thing that kind of came into my mind is where you had uh, within the theme, it's the administration of the theme, the CSS where you were overriding uh, at that level within the administration. Yeah, is, that's, correct. You know, doing things there, the administration, I see where that is powerful, but when it comes to a team, is that a good practice or not to where, you know, managing in a sense, what is code to a developer? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, is, you know, is, is that a good practice? If you're planning to go far away from the default knob commerce, if you're planning to modify a lot of things, and then if you're planning to create more than one team, for example, it's a good practice to have your own modified template instead of starting from the default knob commerce. Uh, but if you don't need any custom modifications and all you need to do is just to change some uh, colors and spacing, then uh, there is no point to take this approach because you are perfectly fine to just make a copy of the default knob commerce and start from there. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, here we go. The injection, the CSS. This even clarifies it as well. This functionality is only for buyers when they're developing a theme. They're not using a particular place to write CSS. Yeah, correct. Let's see. I thought this is a, or a custom theme. Uh, yes, I'm sorry if you thought it was going to be a step-by-step -step on creating a theme. <laughs> we did kind of do a little bit of that, but yeah, it would take quite a while to address the various aspects of customization. But again, I thought you did a good job of sharing um, at a at a medium to high level um, how to go about this. Mm -hmm. uh, after this, we'll there would like to have your email probably just thrown in the chat. Here's another right. question. Um, if you have an HTML UI for a theme, what would be the approach to try to convert it to? Oh, I like this one because um, I'm even kind of questioning this too. When it comes to, let's say, you find a theme on, let's say, on Theme Forest or something like that, something that's not, not specific to not commerce at all, are there any certain um, areas on how you would tackle 
trying to take what someone else has done as for a generic e-commerce theme and try to apply that to uh, even to your own standard. Like what are some of the aspects, like maybe the top three things that you would look at first in, um, you know, trying to take a theme that someone else did. They say it's an e-commerce theme. They say it, it applies to certain standards. Um, what would you be looking for to carry over that theme pattern? Okay, so if I understand correctly, the question is about if you have a third party uh, e-commerce code, which you want to apply to your knob commerce team, what you do, is that correct? Yes, uh, if, you're, if you have your own theme that you either bought from somewhere else or, or um, that's not now commerce specific. Mm, well, that's, how, how, how would you go about, that, you know, trying to... That really depends uh, on the exact UI or tool you want to implement. Uh, for example, if, if it's a bootstrap UI, it will require a lot of source code modifications at the front end of your knob commerce team because it's just like bootstrap it's working that way you can't go without uh, this many modifications and if it's something else maybe it will require less changes mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, you can share this image. Oh yeah, we talked about sharing the image of the separation. I think that would be valuable even though. Yeah, well, I can I can share with everyone. Just uh, drop us an email and we'll send it to you. That sounds good. And actually this is a valid question here. This was just added to the chat. How can we access the more technical developer theme talk that was mentioned earlier? So when it comes to more technical aspects around theme development. I think a lot of people take for granted uh, when they first look at programming in themes that I could see where a more thorough, a much longer talk than you know than we would have time yeah. to hear. But and when it comes to like, let's say, are there any courses or anything that you're aware of when it comes to theme development that really kind of walks you through um, maybe different aspects of, uh, oh gosh, you can pick on search, you could pick on, you know, product layout, you mm -hmm. could pick on administration. You know, there's actually a lot of different areas, even like what I got into on just adding the, um, you know, the social button for something oh, wow. that feels like it should be simple. You know, have you seen any other uh, courses out there or any other guidance um, that could be made available, whether it's provided by not templates or just someone else? Well, not not really. I cannot think of such courses. We we started with Knobcommerce very early and at that time there was almost no information about the framework online. So we developed everything ourselves. So mm -hmm. I am not really familiar with uh, any available Knobcommerce courses and tutorials. Sounds like there's a need out there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Well, he spoke at the, oh, the meetup session before this one. Yeah, yeah the meetup the session before session. this one was about the plugin session. Yeah, by the way, I think we're going to have a part two of the plugin session. Um, they offered uh, to continue the discussion on plugins getting into um, plugins that do a lot of data access and migration. So there's a very good chance we're going to have a, a continuation of that talk at a future meetup, possibly next month. Uh, John, will you get this image with the site separation in place somewhere on meetup? So yeah, if you if you are able to share that link, Crystal, you could provide a, a link in the meetup itself uh, or other, for other people to get to it. But yeah, of course, go it is, through. It is not online. First. Uh, it is not online, so I cannot share a link. I just have to send you. I, I have to send you the file. And that's fine. If you send me um, a file, I can share a link to it. Okay, so, right now or later? Your choice. No hurry. No hurry. Okay, let's do it later. Yep. Um, this is good to mention. There is a course out there by Alex Wolf, but I, 
I don't know if that's, it is very outdated. I agree with that. Um, but that is more focused on plugins, not so much themes as I have really seen in the past, but it's, you know, the, the real big problems at a theme level. But yes, if you haven't seen Alex Wolf's scores, even though they're outdated, um, they're worth checking out. Uh, Pearl site just deprecated the course he had out there. Uh, but you can still get to it on Pearl site or out on YouTube. He has a, uh, so a lot of really good free stuff that's worth checking out. And let's see, I'm just kind of pulling in the questions as they come in or comments. At the very least, if you have a video of that meetup session, that would be valuable. Yes, that session is out on the Knop Commerce YouTube channel. And you can, yeah, watch that session from there, <clears throat> as this session will be as well. And I think that's it. I'll, uh, just wait a tad longer. I think that's about it on questions. All right, Crystal, that was that was great. <laughs> Thanks for the walkthrough. And uh, okay. I saw that the uh, the email was put in there. Uh, sales at not at not dash templates dot com. If you want to get more information um, from the team at not templates, and uh, you can email me at john at notacademy dot com if you want to get more information about the meetup itself. If you want a speaker sponsor. All right. I think, okay. we'll, I think that's it. I appreciate Thank everyone you. attending. We'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you.